uh, enjoyable experience that film is. Fun, happy family comedy. I can't help but think of what we were discussing right prior, <clears throat> that this film was born out of your uh, time in the East, in the East of Russia, I guess, um, studying uh, spirituality. And um, I, I, I wish you'd address that in the context of, of the story, what we saw. What, what was it that led you to this more specifically than the general study of uh, spirituality? So basically what he's saying that the movie that he did in the east of Russia was purely a documentary. So he was documenting the uh, tradition of th that particular people um, leading the soul back into the different world. And this is kind of their artistic interpretation of that because what we see is most of, like, first and most of all, is a different um, dimension of the world and most importantly, human consciousness. So that's kind of what he was trying to convey. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly had the sense of uh, uh, human consciousness and uh, uh, it's migrating through the story and through different aspects. I mean, initially, when they are brought to the police station, I had the sense they were in purgatory. But then as we went into the flashback in the early life, I really felt like I had moved into a different movie. And initially, I was disoriented by that but then I kind of got way into this new movie do you know yeah, what I same. mean um, and uh, and it was fascinating and then to bring it back around uh, was very interesting and and emotionally powerful uh, um, saying that the big principle of um, the idea uh, initially was that the base has to be very alike as a meditation so that you have time and like that you perceive time differently and it's very slow and you kind of get to get into it and to to look at it um, psychologically from a different point the nature of consciousness and the nature of time are identical in a way the idea was to create a model of time that would kind of blossom and show the consciousness. I'm not sure I entirely understand that. What, I, what strikes me initially is the comment that the nature of consciousness and the nature of time are the same. Because I, I in my simplistic view, understand that uh, rather completely. My, you know, time... Our perception of time passing is completely related to our consciousness. Um, and, you know, the, with absent human consciousness or animal consciousness, time has an entirely different meaning. Um, because although things still age and decay, uh, the process is so much longer. So anyway, let me pick up on that question of pacing. Okay. Um, did you uh, intentionally, because I did feel the, um, the pace of the film was, one, after the accident, very slow, and then it changed, of course, and so did you editorially create that precisely to illustrate what you're describing? Okay. Um, so what he's saying is that he was trying to base it on the feeling that he initially went to do the movie with. So in the very beginning, clearly we're in the reality, and then they're in this transcendent, different state. So clearly their per their perception of time is different because it kind of, you know, exists and doesn't. And then when we come back around to the reality, our perception of reality after watching what we just saw is also different. So the way the time is portrayed is different. Um, people are blinded by the rhythm of our life, and life kind of dictates the pace that we have to live it, and we get hypnotized, and we never you know, pay attention consciously to it. So in order to tell the story, we had to be taken out of the rhythm that we're used to for it to be conveyed properly. Uh, he's saying that you guys discuss, discussed Dostoevsky, and in The Idiot, there was uh, one bit where uh, Muhammad fell down and he had an um, epilepsy bout, and he knocked over a vessel with milk, 
And in the time that the vessel hit the ground and spilled the milk, he had like a spiritual mirage and he um, traveled to Mecca and then he had something happen there and then he traveled back into consciousness and only then the, mm -hmm. the vessel hit the ground. So those were two completely different timelines in a way. So his consciousness, his unconsciousness. In a certain way, the structure of the story and the structure of the movie have something, something to do with each other, slightly. Right, and uh, the the As we said. the illustration from the idiot it relates to our perception of time again, as as he initiated. Um, so, let me ask a, a, a question because when uh, about the perception of time, I I. I get vague. I'm not entirely clear. But I am clearer about what I see in the movie. So the the, I perceived the story as being, uh, I'm inside his head. And that, it, that this is his vision, this is his trip to Mecca while the vessel falls to sp before it spills the milk. Um, is that how, you, uh, how it is intended? Because her, she has a consciousness in it as well, and yet I, I feel that I'm, I'm seeing it through his perception. Uh, well, clearly, this is the story of the main character, so we perceive everything through the eyes of the main character. But as in real life, um, people get brought onto our life, and we kind of drag them into our life. And since she's such a big part of his life, and women in general is such a big part of his life because he has like really big trust issues with women that and that's you know as the story unfolds we can see kind of why um and that's why he wanted this female presence so i have uh i was thinking as i watched the film that uh in the here in uh hollywood uh, American filmmaking, and I think it's true, it's had some impact on British filmmaking too, but it's really characteristically American. The way we uh, rely very strongly on film structure, and part of that film structure is an arc of transformation in our protagonist, pretty well laid out, uh, almost uh, diagrammatically, in hundreds, if not do at least dozens, of screenwriting books. And, you know, and we do see an incredible similarity in the character arc of our protagonists. He, he hasn't seen the movie, but he thinks that the tradition that he was trying to, to you know, um, go with it about is the European, like, F Faust-like tradition. So, might as well. Polanski does have the Faust-like stuff. Yep, yeah. yeah. It's also, you know, always. there was a sense, I had the sense, perhaps some of you shared it too, in the first 15 minutes of this film, this is going to be a horror film. And yeah. in its way, it is. But the, the, the ambiance was uh, the ambiance of a horror movie. And I think that that is really a testament in a good way because it is very Faustian. It is very Faustian, that sense of horror and foreboding that I had in the beginning. I thought it was very, very... It, it led me very well. I was surprised. Wait, it doesn't seem to be going into a horror movie, and yet that feeling stayed with me. And it really was the right resonance for the film. Well, because it isn't horror, but that ambiance, yes. which is Faustian. I mean, it is very much that sense of, of fear and, and ominous uh, uh, foreboding um, it was there. It was, it was there all the way through because of the first 15. Even when we got into a later part and, and the flashback, which initially isn't so scary, although it gets scary. Um, but I do want to ask, who is the mud man? Okay. And, and very specifically... Um, it isn't about perception because he sees the sign. The accident is caused because he sees that sign of the mud man, right? He sees it, and then the mud man appears uh, uh, right in front of the car and then reappears uh, later. And what is he feeling about Let the mud man? The first... So what he's saying is this archety archetype of the shadow um, was now... Nefs, uh, it's the animal spirit, 
And basically, it's all the dark and animalistic stuff that he collected within himself and that he well, has listen, to face. Well, uh, listen, I want to I thank you very much for sharing this with us. It's really been an interesting process. I'm so glad you were all here and, and uh, responded to it that way. And I look forward to seeing your next film and, and uh, perhaps someday seeing a film in English from you. <laughs> so thanks again very much.